In this video, we are going to learn about inscribed similar triangles. In this case, we're going to think about a right triangle like this one. Now, to be inscribed means that one object is within the other one. So in this case, what we're going to do is draw a height for this right triangle right here. Now notice that there are three right triangles in this picture. We have the large one, the original one, and then two new ones. And all three of these right triangles are similar. Remember that one way to prove that two triangles are similar is by angle-angle. If you can show that there are two pairs of angles that are congruent, and that's what we can do for each of these because they're all right triangles, so they already all have right angles. And also, they all share another angle. So for example, this angle right here is in both the blue right triangle and the green right triangle. Therefore, those two triangles are similar because they both have that angle and a right angle. And similarly, this angle right here is both in the pink triangle and the blue triangle, so for the same logic, it is similar to the larger triangle, so therefore all three right triangles are similar. Remember that with similar triangles, the corresponding sides are always proportional or in the same ratio, so that means that we can figure out missing information about this right triangle situation, given that we know that all three of those triangles must be similar. So if we have all of those segments labeled, for example, if we looked at the pink triangle and looked at the ratio between A and C, so that's the ratio between the hypotenuse and the leg that's connecting the double marked angle with the right angle, that ratio will be the same as the hypotenuse to that same leg in each of the triangles. So in the large blue right triangle, that's the same as the hypotenuse, which is C plus D, over the leg that connects the two angle markings to the right angle. And in this large triangle, that would be side A, and we have this relationship. So you can imagine if you knew some of the side lengths as numbers, measurements, you would be able to set up proportional equations such as this one in order to solve for missing sides. Now this sort of situation where you have a number over something equals something else over that original number, in other words, where these two match, is similar to where you're finding something called the geometric mean. So we're going to talk about that briefly as well. So the geometric mean of two numbers, x and y, is if you set up an equation, x over u equals u over y, then u will be the geometric mean of these two numbers. So in other words, if we solve this to get u squared equals xy and u equals the square root of xy, the geometric mean of x and y of those two numbers equals the square root of xy. So for example, if you had two numbers, 5 and 7, and you wanted to know their geometric mean, you're trying to figure out a number such that 5 over u will be the same thing as u over 7, and that will always just end up being the square root of 5 times 7, which is 35. So the geometric mean of 5 and 7 is the square root of 35. Now the only reason that's relevant here is because, again, this sort of equation where you have two parts matching will always be the same as the sort of proportional equations you get with inscribed similar triangles.